All right, let's go ahead and get started. Once again, my name is Keith Whalen. I'm from RPI Consultants. This is our final webinar today from our Tampa offices, uh, Windows 2008 Lost and Support Considerations. We have two great presenters today, and I will introduce them in a second. Uh, but first, I want to point out that if you enjoyed these, we have more webinars going on next week, next Tuesday and Wednesday. They are functional webinars related to financials, supply chain, uh, and HCM. And without further ado, I introduce you to Mr. Richard Stout. Uh, back for his fourth bout of the day, Woo! brother commentator extraordinaire. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Carl B. Thanks, Keith. All right. So uh, if you are joining us today, you're running your Lawson platform on Windows 2008 wow. or Windows 2008 R2. Probably. Probably. Or you have friends <laughs> that do. Um, <clears throat> So today, we're gonna, we have a, a relatively short presentation, um, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Let's talk about what's going on, what is the situation that we're in, and uh, what, what, what is our path forward uh, to maintain a, a supportable uh, in-for loss and environment. Uh, so before I dive in, uh, let me say that we are RPI consultants. We are not in-for, we're an in-for partner. Uh, but that we don't we don't speak for Infor, um, so uh, really uh, any any policy uh, around support is needs to come uh, any clarification on policy needs to come directly from Infor, and uh, we we do recommend that if you have any questions around the support of your system, uh, open a open a case with Infor Extreme. So you have a documented response uh, from the software vendor. Uh, but with that, we'll do our best to interpret and explain uh, what, what we know. Um, so we'll start with the uh, big announcement uh, that on May 31st, 2017, support for Infor Loss and Products installed on Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2008 R2, uh, will uh, end, and uh, what does that what does that really mean? What what is life after May thirty first like? Um, the, sky falls. the sky falls. Now, what it really means is that no new patches will be created. Um, so, if there if if issues come up in the environment. Uh, that would be resolved by a patch, that would be uh, you know, resolved by uh, Infor modifying the code. Um, you know, after May 31st, uh, they will not be release creating or releasing new patches. And if you, encounter, uh, if you encounter an issue that is resolved by a patch, uh, if the patch already exists for the Windows 2008 platform, you'll have a, it'll, it will be available to you uh, but there is the potential that Infor could say, uh, no, we are unable to resolve this issue in your environment uh, with the configuration that you have today, and, the, and your path to a resolution uh, would be moving to a different operating system. So the one exception to that is application CTPs and the year-end programs mm -hmm. should be fine since those are outside of uh, operating system. Yeah, exactly. Specific, but uh, the accounts payable year-end update. And the payroll. And the payroll year-end update. Uh, those are delivered as COBOL source code, and we don't anticipate uh, any issues with uh, acquiring and applying those patches uh, at the end of 2017. So, rumors. <laughs> rumors. Uh, is it true that Lawson's going to stop working in June 2017? <laughs> no, that is <laughs> false. Uh, your system will continue to run uh, as, as usual. Um, is it true that Infor support won't help us, that we're basically running completely on our own uh, after May 31st? Uh, no, that is also false. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, Infor support will still do the best they can to help you uh, with, with troubleshooting uh, to help you with advice and resolving any issues with your system. Uh, it, they, you know, it's just that, that, that there is a limit to their uh, 
ability to help when you're when you're on a, a, a platform that uh, you know is, is no longer getting uh, new updates uh, made available to it. Uh, so what can you do if uh, you'd like to stay? Well, uh, we, there is a, a Microsoft extended support available. Um, you can purchase extended support from Microsoft uh, for the operating system, uh, which is going to run up through January 14th of 2020. And there are only two versions uh, that are, are uh, valid here. So if you are not on one of these service pack levels, this is where you want to be. On Server 2008 R2, you need Service Pack 1 installed. And on Server 2008, you need Service Pack 2 installed. And uh, this information is lifted straight from the Microsoft Product Lifecycle uh, website. So it seems like we've run into this before. Yeah, this, this oh. all sounds a little bit familiar to me. <laughs> uh, so if you seem to remember, uh, roughly two years ago, BSI 10 came out. Uh, so N4 ended support for BSI Attacks Factory version 9. Um, so there was a big rush of clients moving to 10 at the last possible second. Um, so part of that process, there was application CTPs to be applied and also LSF environment patches had to be applied, um, which is all fine and well, except N4 had kind of somewhat quietly ended support for Windows 2003 for Lost in Systems Foundation. Um, so kind of the same thing. What you want to, what we try or what we hope to accomplish is first to not be surprised by the end of support coming out, not mm -hmm. running into a situation where you're at the last second. Um, where in those situations, you find out the last second and you have to basically reinstall everything on Windows 2008. Yeah, this was really a, a roundabout gotcha here that, that started with uh, getting uh, regulatory updates to tax calculations and ended up with uh, a forced platform change because there were some prerequisite uh, environment code that uh, needed to be installed and, and in Ford didn't release a 32-bit compilation of that code. Uh, so customers who were running Windows 2003 on 32-bit architecture uh, basically just did not have the uh, environment level updates available that they, that they needed. Um, so, Okay, so uh, we, we, we understand the risks uh, and, we, and we've seen this happen before. So what, what are the options? What can, we, what can we do? What do we do at this point? Uh, well, one option is to, to wait it out. Um, to, you know, maybe um, for one reason or another, it might make sense for your organization uh, to uh, go for a period um, you know, on, on Windows 2008 uh, per, uh, past this end date. Perhaps you have a, you know, already have a project in place to move to a new platform. Um, perhaps your, uh, you know, the, the future of, of your in for lost environment is, um, you know, has, hasn't really been set in stone yet due to a merger or acquisition or a, a potential migration to uh, a cloud or uh, another platform or maybe even another ERP altogether, um, what can we do to best prepare ourselves uh, to be in the state of limited support uh, after May 31st? Uh, we do uh, recommend um, you know, having the uh, highest level of support that you can get at least from your operating system vendor from Microsoft. Uh, so uh, get an extended support uh, agreement from, from Microsoft for the operating system and take advantage of the time between now and May 31st uh, to, to get your house in order, to get your system uh, patched to the level that you want to be at for an extended period. Uh, don't wait until the last minute because uh, after May 31st, uh, that it would uh, behoove you to minimize the number of changes or updates or impacts to the system. Uh, so, uh, you know, once support has ended, you want to make sure uh, your environment isn't going to be impacted uh, by something like uh, operating system update, you know, like a Windows update, uh, a change to your virtualization client tools or device drivers, or changes at the database layer. 
Uh, these are all the kinds of changes that, that might uh, require an update to the LSF uh, environment, which you certainly want to avoid. And if you're looking at updating the LSF version, uh, you might want to think about like an N-1, where all the patches are readily available, mm -hmm. uh, where you're not getting into a situation of testing, getting patches, and maybe you cross that threshold and not able to get a patch for an issue. Yeah, absolutely. So pros and cons. of uh, Let's do a little uh, RPI Late Show pros and cons of waiting it out on uh, the 2008 platform. Pro, uh, it you know this is the this is the the minimal cost minimal effort option uh, where you you basically put your uh, environment changes on on a, on a chill for a while, and um, it, while maybe other project activities are going on while decisions are being made, um, you know what have you. Uh, con, it is postponing the inevitable. It's going uh, right. away. It's, it's going, <laughs> Windows 2008 is going away. Uh, and it d definitely introduces a level of risk to your mm -hmm. uptime uh, capability and a, uh, a potential compliance risk uh, because you um, maybe can't take adva advantage of uh, security updates or uh, patch potential vulnerabilities that, that may be discovered. You know, we, don't, we don't know what security uh, uh, vulnerabilities might be found uh, in the 2008 platform you know, a year or two or three uh, from now and it, you won't be in the best position to uh, secure those vulnerabilities. There's a lot of ties tie-ins to the LSF patch too, like we know Landmark and ISS. Mm -hmm. uh, you never know when another BSI update might come out that requires that LSF patch. Whoa, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> BSI 11. All right, so what, what else do we do? Other than weigh it out, uh, what other options do we have? Um, wouldn't it be nice if we could just do an in-place upgrade of the operating system uh, and get up to a uh, 2012 level? Just upgrade the OS, right? Just upgrade the OS. Um, so this isn't our recommend, this is not our recommendation. It's not Microsoft's recommendation, it's not Infor's recommendation. Uh, there are, are uh, significant changes, especially on the LSF side, uh, that need to, need to be made between the operating system versions. And an in-place upgrade on Windows uh, has just never been as clean as mm. a, uh, a fresh install. So with that in mind, pros and cons of in-place upgrade. Uh, the, <laughs> the pro is uh, if, if, if it can be done, uh, it's certainly less effort than rebuilding a server from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, the con is it might not actually be possible, <laughs> uh, you know, depending on the particulars of the system. And there's maybe some out of a spectrum here. So LSF in place upgrade uh, is probably uh, is probably a pipe dream. Uh, a simpler server like a MSCM or a LBI, uh, you might have better luck with. Mm -hmm. What other uh, options do we have? Um, the uh, the most probably the uh, the most common way to address the situation is by uh, doing a parallel upgrade or uh, building out fresh Lawson servers on the Windows 2012 R2 uh, platform, mm -hmm. migrating over data and configuration and doing a <coughs> cutover. Um, so pros and cons of a parallel upgrade strategy. Uh, pro is you get to build out a fresh Lawson system with all the latest versions and components mm -hmm. and you can take a look at your design and architecture of your of your existing environment and think through what's worked well, what hasn't worked as great, uh, and you have an opportunity to make some decisions uh, that are really only possible uh, to decide right at, you know, during the planning phase of an install. Right. Uh, maybe you weren't happy with how SSO or authentication was set up previously. This mm -hmm. is your chance to build a new environment uh, using uh, you know, the, all of the design choices 
uh, that can be made with the benefit of experience. You could even take advantage of uh, Active Directory Federation services or like you said, the latest, greatest technology, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, yeah. And uh, if you're on uh, physical hardware, uh, this is also a great time to mm -hmm. uh, maybe virtualize or uh, move up to a, um, a newer, newer set of uh, physical servers. It's a really good time to evaluate performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't have high enough specs on your servers or they weren't configured in the best way. Um, really uh, optimize performance and get that while, while you're at it. Yeah. And uh, of course, cons of the parallel upgrade approach. Uh, it is uh, quite a large effort because it involves mm -hmm. installing all loss and components over again. And um, you know, we typically structure such a, such a, a project uh, with multiple migration passes uh, and a good, good level of testing. And um, a, the more uh, customizations there are in the system, uh, the, the, the more effort would be involved in a parallel uh, approach because all of those customizations need to get ported over uh, to the new system. And interfaces and basically any connections to the Lawson system. Yeah. All right, uh, what else can we do? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can migrate to the cloud. Uh, you know that everyone's if, doing it. Everyone's doing it. Um, if you know, this is a, a probably a great time to think. Uh, if if you are at all uh, interested in exploring uh, the possibility of moving to the cloud, if this is something that's in your roadmap, um, making that move to the cloud now uh, could save you the effort of you know dealing with uh, a, an extensive round of updates on your on-premise system. This is great timing. Mm -hmm. for, for uh, making the jump to the cloud. Uh, so pros of moving to the cloud, uh, you can outsource your, uh, plat you know, your, your, your virtual hardware platform to a firm that specializes in that work, uh, a firm mm -hmm. that, who makes it their core competency uh, to keep uh, Windows servers up and running. And, and that, that allows you to free up your internal uh, resource time to focus on more value add uh, activities such as project based work, really uh, looking at improving the system and uh, configuring the system to optimize your business processes. Who, mm -hmm. who, who better uh, to uh, take, a, you know, really embed in your functional areas and, uh, and, and do process optimization work and really make sure that you're uh, ERP system is is geared towards your business uh, than your uh, your internal team. Who's been there? Who yeah? Who's been there all along and has a, a you know relationship and and with the end users and uh, is a, a you know a core part of your organization. Cons of moving to the cloud: uh, you relinquish control of the of the system. You. Uh, mm -hmm. It, the model is different. You become a subscriber uh, to the application uh, rather than, than uh, a, uh, more of a, a system owner. And uh, of course, uh, a cloud project is always uh, a challenge. Uh, there is always the challenge of uh, bringing uh, customizations uh, you know, into the cloud. Uh, the SaaS model is not uh, geared towards uh, everyone having their own, app, you know, very own differently acting applications. Uh, it works right. best when everyone shares the same application base. Uh, so there is the effort of uh, going through um, customizations and uh, e either uh, bringing them to the cloud or, um, you know, uh, finding an alternate uh, uh, solution for the, the business challenge that, that mm -hmm. ended up creating customization in the first place. It's also an opportunity of going through and using N4 supported extensions rather than customizing code. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. I mean, that's just a, that's, that's a general trend that we right. would recommend uh, today and I think applies uh, as far as maintainability uh, to on-premise environments right. as well. So um, now that we know our options, um, let's talk about some differences between Lawson running on Windows 2008 and Lawson running on Windows 2012. 
Right. So the biggest difference is uh, micro focus. Uh, Windows 2012 requires Visual COBOL rather than NetExpress. Uh, the downside there is it's not free. Yeah. Uh, so when uh, your your LSF environment uh, on a Windows 2012 platform, the 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 COBOL runtime is different. Um, this is a change that uh, micro focus made, and they have decided to uh, make that a chargeable uh, change. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, uh, if you need to get a license for Visual COBOL, your Infor account executive uh, can facilitate that. Uh, the second kind of minor change is the Unix subsystem. So instead of the Microsoft SUA, uh, you have to install Sigwin. Um, really the only difference that we've seen there is if you have custom scripting that's looking at those utilities. Uh, there's a few minor differences there, but most people won't know the difference. Uh, for Smart Office, it requires a SQL database now mm -hmm. um, to, to keep the configuration there. And it also moves up to Lifecycle Manager 10. Yeah, so uh, Smart Office Server uh, running on Windows 2008, the LCM version is, is 9 that's compatible with the operating system. Mm -hmm. You have to change to LCM 10 uh, on the Windows 2012 platform. And LCM 10 introduces a SQL Server database uh, requirement which probably isn't a big deal because presumably you already have SQL Server as part mm. of your environment. Uh, the one interesting uh, sort of caveat there is it doesn't just take a database, there's actually uh, a bit of server-side code that needs to run. So there's an LCM right. agent that is actually installed on the database server, which is your infrastructure engineer's worst nightmare. <laughs> Uh, also with Mingle, um, kind of a kind of a big change in the background, uh, moving up from SharePoint 2013 from SharePoint 2010. Uh, so some design changes there, mm -hmm. but um, probably invisible to the end user. So yeah. uh, also Java and WebSphere, moving up to Java 7. Uh, you might be running Java 6 right now, or WebSphere 7. Yeah, uh, the modern in for Lawson platform is all uh, Java 7 across mm -hmm. the board, which requires WebSphere 8.5. And um, if, if your environment uh, was installed, uh, you know, a loss in 10 environment circa 2013 is probably going to be built on uh, JDK 6. Mm -hmm. um, this is a pretty big, big change and uh, maybe uh, is a factor that might sway you towards a parallel upgrade approach, right. uh, knowing that you would have. Um, in addition to your operating system update, uh, you, you would have had to make updates to WebSphere and Java across uh, your, your uh, collection of loss and servers. Mm -hmm. um, so a uh, parallel approach to that enables you to make that move at the same time as the operating system change. Definitely tough for a downtime weekend. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, we focused on uh, changes on the LSF and uh, Smart Office and, 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 and Mingle servers. Uh, the good news is that um, there's not a lot of changes going on under the hood with Landmark, uh, with LBI, uh, with, with MSCM. Uh, the, those are uh, relatively the same uh, regardless of the operating system version. So uh, how can RPI help you uh, to move forward and maintain a, a supportable modern uh, ERP system? Uh, we can help you if you're interested uh, in exploring the parallel upgrade approach. Uh, we can help you by scoping out a, a work effort estimate. Uh, we can assist with a, 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 a technical assessment and, uh, and system roadmap. Uh, this, uh, we can help you get a handle on all of the customizations, integrations, uh, in interfaces, extensions, reports. Uh, that interact with the Lawson system and would be impacted by such a change. Uh, and RPI uh, does offer managed services uh, where we can uh, fulfill a, uh, a recurring Lawson administration uh, role in your organization. Uh, and uh, our, I would like to think that our managed services are, are unique uh, among the industry in that we're not solely focused on break, fix, technical support, uh, our managed services brings to bear uh, a functional consulting expertise uh, and assistance as well, and can even uh, be utilized for uh, minor project work. Uh, if uh, there's anything 
that we could do uh, to, to help you uh, do uh, drop us a line. And with that, we will open it up to uh, questions, although our teleprompter seems to have fallen asleep. <laughs> uh, wake up, teleprompter. Maybe we can just read them off for now. Aha! <laughs> um, it, um, so, okay, if I'm on Windows Server 2008, um, can I move to the Infor Cloud? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. This is, yeah, yeah, this is a great time uh, to be thinking about that. Is RPI a cloud specialized alliance partner? Yes, we are. All right. We are certified. Tell us more about your Tampa Technology Center of Excellence. I don't know much about it. <laughs> Some of these questions are very suspicious. <laughs> uh, okay, what, uh, what's the impact on the database when you migrate to a new Windows server? Uh, if you're going from SQL to SQL, it's very minimal. Even if you're upgrading SQL, say you're on 2008 and going up to 2014, uh, very minimal. If you happen to be running Oracle or some other database platform, then there is an extra conversion there. Um, but even then, it's pretty minimal. OK, great. Um, how about data migration, please? Um, some clarification on this question. Be helpful, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, data migration. Um, you know, if if your if your data lives in SQL Server uh, today, uh, you're pretty well positioned for uh, data migration, either on-premise, server to server, uh, mm -hmm. or going to the cloud, because you can back up your SQL Server database and do that migration at the database server level rather than having to use loss and utilities to export data out to a file and then run through the application layer, uh, mm -hmm. which is a bit more time consuming. Um, since Landmark is less impacted, can we just upgrade the OS? Uh, what do you think? I would say we don't know. Yeah. Uh, we still don't know even if, since it's still not, it's still not uh, recommended by Microsoft, um, I don't know that we would recommend doing something against uh, the recommendation of Microsoft still. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, it's, it's certainly fair game to try. Right. Uh, and I would just say, you know, uh, be prepared. Um, make sure that you can roll back or, or recover uh, from any changes that you make. Uh, make sure that your backups are, are solid. Uh, make sure you allow enough time in your, in, your, in your project plan to account for, hey, we might not have success on the first try, uh, mm -hmm. but we might want to pencil in enough time to try it uh, more than once, uh, you know, rolling forward lessons learned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, let us know how it goes, I think, and we'll try to, you know, we'll try to share uh, feedback, you know, to the community. Uh, this isn't going to be the same answer for everyone. Right? Right. I mean, every, every Boston uh, ecosystem is unique, so some, some might uh, have better success with an in-place attempt than others. Definitely would be easier if you're already running Windows VM and you have the VM tools in place to take mm -hmm. clone snapshots and easily revert it back. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, virtualization infrastructure is really invaluable when it comes to this type right. of, of, of work. It's so much faster than uh, backing up and restoring on, on physical hardware. Um, we have LSF on a Unix server, and Mingle is on Windows Server 2008. Should I still move Mingle onto a 2012 server? Good question. Uh, so you might be a little more, uh, might have a little more leeway on the waited out section there, because mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what are you going to get a patch for Mingle for? 
Um, but it, you would need to be prepared that any time that you need to upgrade to a new Mingle version, um, that you would definitely have to upgrade the OS before you can move forward with that. What if, uh, what if they need to update a DSP.jar on, on the Mingle box and the, you know, the, a required version of DSP all of a sudden doesn't work with Windows 2008? That's a possibility? True. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. Um, the installer itself isn't OS dependent, but it does have OS requirements, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so some of the underlying code may not work with the decommissioned operating system. So what level yeah. of effort would there be on something like that, like just upgrading to Mingle? Reinstalling Mingle on a new server or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. I'd say Mingle is a relatively quick install, um, so I don't know that you save a lot by waiting on that. I mean, it's a, in comparison to LSF or Landmark. It's yeah. Uh, and we do, uh, Inford has clarified that, um, you know, this policy does apply to, to Mingle. So uh, mm -hmm. you, you will, you will have a, and, uh, you know, the, the same, uh, the same sunsetting or changing of in support level uh, that we're seeing on LSF does apply to Mingle uh, on the same date, the 31st, uh, if running on Win, Win 2008. Um, okay, I think that that has been all the questions. So I do thank you so much uh, for attending. And if you think of anything else, do feel free to drop us a line. Yeah, both emails are up here. Wanna, once again, thank you for attending our fourth and last webinar of the day. Uh, first day of webinars from our Tampa Technology Center of Excellence. Is that what uh, officially branded? Uh, next week we'll be holding, we'll be back in Baltimore, we'll be holding more uh, webinars. Uh, we'll be talking about benefits in version 11, preparing for global HR, we'll be talking about asset management, PCARD integration, contract management, RQC best practices. Please join us. Go to rpic.com slash webinars. You can see everything we have on schedule and you can register there. Once again, thank you. Have a great day.